delineating the availability and quality of aquifer resources on Jane Smith Cree Nation and Yellow Quail First Nation Reserves. Hello, I'm Brandon Stoner, and I would like to begin my presentation by acknowledging that I live and work on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay respect to our First Nations and Métis ancestors and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Research Partnerships My industry partner is the School of Environment and Sustainability, working with Dr. Lori Bradford and Dr. Grant Ferguson. We have the privilege of engaging with two First Nations communities, James Smith Cree Nation, located approximately 67 kilometers east of Prince Albert, and Yellow Quail First Nation, located approximately 240 kilometers east of Saskatoon. Our research was led by community-based questions from the two nations. What are the potential groundwater resources below, in, and around our reserves? Where does the groundwater which supplies our water treatment plants come from? What alternative groundwater resources are available to us, and what threats exist to our groundwater supply? To help answer these questions, I used ArcGIS mapping, where I constructed an ArcGIS project and user geodatabase. I downloaded seven shapefiles, shown as the topmost layers on the left, and created 31 additional shapefiles, most of which are aquifers, aka water-producing rock units. All shapefiles were saved under the digitizing geodatabase for future use. ArcGIS was also used to create a series of eight aquifer maps for each nation. These maps show all the mapped aquifers on each nation in proper stratigraphic order. Maps of individual aquifers are not presented here to conserve time. The aquifer maps were a major part of the presentations to representatives of Jane Smith and Yellowquill, which will be discussed further later on. Another major component of my research was conducting a scoping review on groundwater challenges in First Nations communities in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. The aim of a scoping review is to compile existing research and identify knowledge gaps. For the scoping review, the PRISMA model was followed, where stage one involves identifying articles via their titles, stage two involves screening the articles abstract, stage three involves reading the articles to determine whether or not it is eligible for inclusion, and stage four involves summarizing the included articles. As part of stage four, a spreadsheet database was constructed to summarize the included articles. This spreadsheet is meant to accompany the scoping review. Results and conclusions. 14 databases were searched and 2,765 articles were returned from the search queries. 11 articles have been included thus far and Dr. Bradford will complete the remainder of the scoping review due to time limitations in my summer project. Early results show that there have been very few publications on this subject in the previous five years. Dr. Bradford and I hope to eventually publish this scoping review. Takeaways from presentations to James Smith in Yellowquill. Research findings were presented to representatives of each nation, highlighting which aquifers each nation uses to source their domestic water supply and what alternative aquifers are available, recharge areas for the identified aquifers, and current and future threats to groundwater resources on each reserve. General takeaways include how my research focused slowly on shallow aquifers, and future research should aim to map and further understand the underlying bedrock aquifers, which I identified as part of this project. Future studies should also determine the chemical quality of water and combine 2D maps I created, along with drilling data, to produce 3D models or cross-sections of the aquifers, such as the one you see below. This would further delineate feasibility of the aquifers I identified. James Smith's major takeaways. James Smith now understands how a neighboring diamond mining operation poses a potential threat to its groundwater security. You can see the James Smith Reserve in brown, and in the yellow here we have Shoregold's diamond claim. The mine produces jobs for many households within the reserve, placing community leaders in positions of conflicting interest. Similarly, Yellow Quail now understands how a gravel pit operation located on its territory, approximately marked by the star, may negatively affect the natural groundwater recharge to the aquifers which source the yellow quail water treatment plant. This places yellow quail leaders in a similar position of conflicting interest. In conclusion, the leaderships of both James Smith Cree Nation and yellow quail First Nation have very difficult decisions to make regarding groundwater security for their reserves. The complexity of this deci these decisions is represented visually in this Venn diagram, which shows the factors affecting the decision-making process. Based on the dialogue I've had with each nation, each factor is ultimately grounded at least once one of the three pillars of sustainability. 
My research has provided each nation with some of the information necessary to make informed decisions and ensure the sustainable use of their aquifer resources. Thank you.